Let's do this one. So I'm going to just go ahead and just straight on skip to this step. Because it should, should all be the same, right? Right? So it should say the absolute value of x minus 5. But what am I going to say now? Greater than 4. All the other steps would be the same. We do all these steps and stuff. But I get to this place greater than 4. Okay? Now, I think the simplest way is to draw it on a number line and then write the answer. Where's my center? 5. 5 is what makes it 0. That's my center. So there we go. My boundaries are 4 away from 5. What numbers are 4 away? I'm mean, doing the same example. What numbers are 4 away from 5? 9 and 1. They're 4 away. Is this going to have solid or open dots? Open. Open, because it does not equal. Now here's the question. I want all the numbers that are farther than 4 away from 5. Greater than means a bigger distance. Yeah, so we're going to go away from 5. So I'm going to shade this way, and I'm going to shade that one. Okay? Do you even want me to try to tell you how to do it the other way? No. No. Because no. this one's an or statement, and you've got to remember the difference between or and and, and all that stuff. But you would write the same sort of thing, x minus 5 is greater than 4, x minus 5 is less than or equal, sorry, not equal, less than negative 4. You could write it out in that sort of pattern. But I really think it's easier this way, to draw the number line first, and then go, hey, what's your answer? What does this say? What does this say? What does this part say? X is greater than 9. Okay? And uh, Cook, what does this one say? This one says X is greater than 9. What does that one say? X is less than 1. X is less than 1. Very good. And there you go. Those are my, those are my answers. I didn't need to like remember, is this an and or this is a or, this is a... I actually thought about what it meant. And if you do that, it's actually easier. It's actually easier, believe it or not, to understand how to, what it means than to actually, in this particular case, to work out all the steps. And this is actually true with a lot of things that we do. If you understand what they mean, there's so many short, shorter ways of doing the problem. There are like so many shorter ways of doing the problem. We have to understand it first. Okay, let me uh, go on to a few other examples. These ones are much shorter. If you understand, you almost have to do, like, no steps. Mm -hmm. If you understand, you basically, there aren't very many steps. It's just write the answer. That's what it is. Okay? So the first one says the absolute value of x is greater than negative 2. If we wanted to do the whole, like, step-by-step -step thing where I go, okay, x is greater than negative 2, x is less than positive 2, and it's an or statement because it's greater than and all that crazy stuff. Or I could just stop and say, hey, the absolute value is greater than a negative. Every number. What? Every number. Every number, right? You can't plug anything in there that doesn't work. What symbol do we have to mean? All the numbers. Amen. No? It's a letter. Oh. Um, N. 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 No. W. It's from lesson 1.2. W. R cube. R. 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 What does it stand for? Real. Real. Q stands for rational. Real. Reals. Reals is the big category. Everything fits in it that it, that is actually exists. Real and negative one. Okay. <laughs> what? No, it's absolute value. Oh, oh, it's absolute value. Yeah. All the numbers are. Are fractions in there? Yeah. In reals are all numbers that you've ever seen. There's a number that you haven't seen that fits outside of that category that I teach you in chapter 5. It's called the imaginary oh, real, number. So real is the box that's <laughs> on top. Real is the box that carries everything. Oh, okay. I forgot about that. It's in the name. It's real. It's, it's something that exists. It's a real number. Alright, so this is all reals. This one's going to make you think too. The absolute value of something is less than or equal to zero. Can the absolute value equal zero? Yeah. Yes. 
The yeah. Can the absolute value equal zero? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so that's fine. Can the absolute value be less than zero? Meaning, can it be a negative number? No. No. So what's the only answer? Zero. Zero. P can only be zero. It can't be any other number. That's my answer. And if they want you to graph it on a number line, you go like this. Zero. Dot. Because <laughs> it's the only answer. Okay? So these are sometimes, they'll give you these ones that look really simple and they'll trick you out because you didn't stop to think about it. You were just trying to work through it. Sometimes you just need to stop to think. Okay, now they're going to ask you, they're going to give you a graph and they want you to write the equation. So the way that we do it is we find the center. What's the center? How do you find the center of two numbers? Average. The average, right? So to find the average, you add them together. Negative 5 plus 1 negative equals two. negative 4. And then you five, five, two. divide by how many there are. In this negative case, there are 2. So what's my center? Negative so my center is negative 2. My center is negative 2. How far are the ends from the center? Do you see how it's 3 away? These are 3 away. These are also three away. It should be the same for both. We did it right. So that's the distance. The distance is three. The center is negative two. So I write an absolute value. When I write the absolute value, I'm going to write an expression that when I plug in negative two, I get zero. Because remember, the, we're talking about the distance from zero. I need to have an expression where the center is at zero. Yeah? What if the center is already zero? Then you put, if the center is already zero, you just put like this, absolute value of x. Because if you plug in zero, what do you get? Zero. zero. And we'll, I mean, we'll get there on that one. So this is what I mean. What could I, uh, let's see if uh, someone can figure this out. What can I write in here? Plus two. X minus two. I need, a, I need a variable and something else that when I plug in negative two for the variable, I get zero. So, X plus, two. X plus two. Uh, and some of you, you know, the question made you confused, so maybe now you'll get it. X plus two, what happens when I plug in negative two? I get zero. The center is at zero, but the center here isn't zero, it's negative two. So I need to make it so that when I plug it in, I get zero. That's the big idea. So X plus two, and really, anything you write, you could write something crazy, you could be like, 10x plus 20. If I plug in negative 2, that works, right? I mean, you can get crazy on me. It doesn't matter. But probably the book's going to stay simple, so I would just stay simple. How, how far away can we be? What's the boundary? How far? Three. Three. So the distance, the max distance, or the boundary distance, is that number on the outside. And now the question is, is that distance contained? Are we going smaller than that distance or bigger than that distance? Smaller. We're going smaller, right? We're going in. So that's going to be less than 3 because the distance has to go towards the center. So it's a smaller distance. Can I actually equal the boundary points in this case? Uh, yes. yes. So I would write that. That's my answer. Okay. So the center makes this zero, the distance goes over here, and in this case, because it's going towards, it's the less than distance, I'm going towards the middle. 